Well, as we just wipe off the uh, deep fried chicken juices, uh, we thought it would be a good time to talk to our resident dietitian. <laughs> About vegetarianism. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Um, being a vegetarian isn't a particularly new concept, but it is one which has made a resurgence later. Celebrities taking to social media to praise the benefits of a meat-free lifestyle. But the increased hype has some nutritionists oh, concerned. Sorry. Was that a meat birth? Five, so, what, how many spices? They just repeated. <laughs> Eleven. Oh. Uh, Eleven. Uh, all right. Uh, ve vegetarianism mm -hmm. sounding quite appealing right now. Healthy food guide nutritionist Claire <laughs> Turnbull. Sorry, keep your breath away as well. <laughs> is with us. Hello. Good morning. Mm. Don't judge us. No, I'm not judging. <laughs> I'm not here to judge. Um, <laughs> what What is your concern here? Is it that those who decide to go vegetarian? aren't necessarily replacing the things they're missing out on or they're yeah. doing it for the wrong reasons or what? There's, there's all sorts of things. So, like you said, just because somebody is vegetarian or vegan doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually eating a healthy diet. There are plenty of vegetarians and vegans that miss out on all sorts of different nutrients and you can still eat rubbish and be a vegetarian or a vegan. The other concern that we have at Healthy Food Guide is that there's an increasing number of teenage girls particularly that can use vegetarian and veganism as an entry into disordered eating because basically it allows you to control what you're eating in a completely socially acceptable way um, but it can be a, a red flag sometimes for, for disordered eating. I'd say that that was a majorly sensitive area we were tiptoeing into here because as a parent mm. what do you say to your 15, 14 year old, whatever it is when they say this is what I want you say well hold on well, you're not going to say. We're concerned you might be heading towards an eating disorder, mm. but the parent's natural reaction would be, come on, this is all good food, have another sausage. Yeah. And that could also potentially be damaging, could it not, psychologically? Yeah. Well, forcing I, them to eat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it's not about forcing them to eat. I mm. guess it's just about um, encouraging good balance. So already we know that teenage girls are majorly at risk of having not enough iron anyway, um, and you know, it, it can be a way that they just get around restricting eating. So it's not about saying, right, I'm not letting you do that. It's just about actually supporting them to make good choices and realising it's not just about removing the meat or, and if they go vegan, about also removing dairy products and, and all the other foods, but it's actually about saying, how can we balance things out so you're getting the nutrition mm. that you need? <clears throat> so mm. how do you do that? Maybe you start with vegetarians. If yeah. you're not going to eat meat, I guess iron is a, a big thing. concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How so iron is, iron is a really big one. So green leafy vegetables, you can also get iron um, if you're vegetarian from eggs and your pulses and nuts and seeds. The big thing about iron is if you have drink tea at the same time as iron rich foods, it stops or compromises the absorption of iron. And if you drink Oh, sorry, have vitamin C rich foods. So something like kiwi fruit, orange, or the vitamin C rich vegetables like capsicum, tomato, that enhances the absorption of iron because iron is very well absorbed by your body from meat, not very well absorbed from those other sources. So you have to have vitamin C at the same time. So if you've got a teenager who goes vegetarian who's also very fussy about not eating their vegetables, yes. you're in real trouble. Yeah, you need yeah, to yeah, look yeah, at supplements. Yeah. yeah, well, potentially, yeah. I mean, um, there are certainly, you're definitely at risk of iron deficiency. So keeping on top of iron with blood tests is a good idea and actually taking a baseline <coughs> blood test and then repeating that and seeing how they're going because you can feel so tired and your immune system's compromised with not enough iron as well. We've looked at a, quite a lot of the negatives. There surely are positives as well mm. to those who uh, decide to opt out of the meat. Yeah, well, the, potentially. I mean, you are having a plant-based diet. You have a lot of fibre, reducing your amount of saturated fat. There are some really, really good things, but it does require good planning. And that's really the message, is that it isn't just about mm. removing the meat. You do need to think about the iron and calcium. And um, if, you're, if you're vegan, B12 is a big thing, because you can't get that from... Other than in fortified foods, it's found in animal products. Mm. And I'll point out another positive is that, uh, and this comes from a family where one out of three children is a vegetarian. Mm. Um, and it's been a pretty interesting journey for us on that front. But what I've noticed is as a result, we as a family, we eat more vegetarian eat food, more we eat more fish. Yeah. Um, and we probably eat healthier as a result. Because, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> because every now and again, you know, we sit there and say, we're just not going to cook two ratty meals every night. Mm. So everyone's kind of gone... Partially, yeah, partially, yeah, two or three times. Yeah, a week. And, and absolutely, that's a great way. Incre increasing the number of vegetarian meals we eat is fantastic, <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm all for that. I was vegetarian for 14 years, and I, I did it, and I was well planned, and it was organised. But I guess it's just there are some red flags for some people, mm. so it's just making sure if you are doing it that you're doing it right. What made you go back to meat? Um, I was Bacon. actually anemic. Um, I went vegetarian with the whole BSE thing in the UK when I was four, um, and when I was 18, I was anemic and really, really, really tired, and I ended up. Just 
just gradually working my way back. And now, wow. you know, yeah, I mean, I still have a, a very plant-based diet, but I do include red meat um, and, yeah. And pina colada. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> balance it out that way. Yeah, and you just mentioned the B12. Mm. Why is that so important? And what, you can't get that from anything other than meat? No, so uh, B12 is no. found in animal products. Animal so products. Yeah, animal products. So mainly meat, and we found it also in our dairy products. Um, you can find it in fortified breakfast cereals. Marmite is a place where you can find it. So just tablespoons full of and that Marmite, stuff. But again, Ooh, can it, you it comes along with a lot of salt. So yeah. really, for most vegans, um, it is a really important thing to keep on top of. Um, and if you're not getting enough, you, you will need a supplement. So it is a place where, if it's not planned properly, you can actually have a compromised immune system. Your body's not working properly. So it's balancing it out. Uh, very good. Thank you very much. Salt. There's a lot of salt in that KFC, wasn't there? Yes. And in Lisette. And fat. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's still part of a balanced diet, though. It's a once in a while mm. food. Oh, yeah. I always have my KFC after I've had a few beers. Or yeah. a Monday morning. Yeah. Or a Monday <laughs> or maybe, morning. Or maybe he's on the beers this <laughs> morning. Warmed up again <laughs> on the Monday morning. Claire Turnbull from the Healthy Food Guide.